Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, November 19th, 2019. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Griscoviak. Here. Councilmember Kicker. Here. Councilmember Demmer. Here. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Wells. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. Thank you. Uh, next item is to adopt this evening's agenda. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda with one modification to add an item under proclamations and presentations um, for a DECA. All right. Second. Motion by Geisler. Second by Demmer. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. The agenda is adopted and we've added a proclamation. And I'm going to come around front if I could meet you ladies out front. Is your phone going to time out? Should we take the picture first? <laughs> All right, well, welcome. I have a proclamation here. Uh, whereas DECA, what does DECA stand for? Distributive Education Clubs of America. Okay, that's going to help people as I go through this. <laughs> Whereas DECA is an association of marketing students which prepare the students to be academically prepared, community oriented, professionally responsible, and experienced leaders. And whereas the mission of DECA is to prepare emerging leaders and entrepreneurs in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management. And whereas DECA's guiding principles are designed to explain how DECA fulfills their mission and whereas DECA enhances the co-curricular education of members through a comprehensive program that integrates into classroom instruction, applies learning, connects to business, and promotes competition, and whereas DECA's activities assist in the development of academically prepared, community-oriented, professionally responsible, experienced leaders, and Whereas DECA's attributes and values describe the organization's priorities and standards, including competence, innovation, integrity, teamwork, and now, therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City of Coon Rapids, officially proclaim November 11th through 15th, uh, 2019, as DECA Week in the City of Coon Rapids. So it actually already happened, but here's your proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you like to tell us about this evening? Hi, I'm Jocelyn Ingvaldson. This is Megan Schultz, and then this is Megan Cosman. We're here tonight to accept the DECA proclamation for our for National DECA Week, which will help us out with a chapter project. We will pre be presenting in March. Um, DECA is a club. We do a bunch of different activities. We compete. We do community service activities. We do fun events, and this um, past week was National our DECA Week at our school to um, spread the importance of DECA and the leadership skills it teaches us. Not only does DECA teach skills through the business act, um, career field, but we also teach transferable skills through all different fields. We have students who go through the DECA program who are now biochemists, who are now engineers, um, and also entrepreneurs. So we teach skills that are transferable to all different career fields. Excellent. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, and there's your proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of November 6, 2019. Your Honor. Councilmember Demmer. Uh, move the approval of the minutes from November 6, 2019. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Kicker. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. 
Uh, we have two items on this evening's consent agenda. Uh, the first one is to approve the 2020 SCORE recycling agreement with Anoka County. Anoka County, which funds the city's residential solid waste recycling program. The term of this agreement is from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. The funds within this agreement are used to meet the 2020 recycling goal of 6,578 tons as set by Anoka County. And Coon Rapids is entitled to receive reimbursement for eligible activities up to $215,436. This amount includes $195,436. Dollars, um, which is the total population and household allotment for the recycling program and $20,000 dedicated for facility improvements. <clears throat> Excuse me. The 2020 recycling budget will be approved by the, city of, by the city and county before year's end and the score funds will be available to Coon Rapids on January 1st. So we're looking to approve the 2020 score grant from Anoka County and authorize staff to execute the 2020 agreement for the residential recycling program. And then the second item on this evening's consent agenda is to approve waiver of the Christmas tree sales license fees for Boy Scout Troop 212. Boy Scout Troop 212 has submitted an application to operate a Christmas tree lot at 1919 Coon Rapids Boulevard. The troop has requested this in years past and the council has always granted the waiver. The Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts are a nonprofit organization, so we're looking to approve the waiver of an $85 license fee and a $25 background investigation fee for Boy Scout Troop 212 to operate a Christmas tree lot at 1919 Coon Rapids Boulevard, which, just as a clarification, is out in front of the Coon Rapids VFW down there on Coon Rapids Boulevard. And that's our full consent agenda. Your Honor. Councilmember Wells. I move the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Wells, second by Griscoviak. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion <coughs> carries and the consent agenda is adopted. Um, next item on our agenda is item four. Uh, and this is to continue a public hearing to vacate a public roadway. Um, Mr. Brody, Mr. Brody, looks like we need a little bit more time. That's correct, Your Honor. Um, Excel actually has utilities in these areas that need to be vacated, and so there's always a little bit of a timing issue as we vacate items in order to close, or as part of the closing, and then having them moved at a different time, and so we're trying to work that out and just need a little additional time and to work with Excel. Okay. So the public hearing um, for the public roadway utility and sanitary sewer easement vacations for Port Riverwalk area um, are being uh, continued and the public hearing will be at, at the December 3rd, 2019 council meeting. So actually, and technically what I'd ask you to do is open the public hearing and continue it until that date. Okay. I hate to miss an opportunity to use a gavel. All right, we'll open the public hearing on the uh, Port Riverwalk area sanitary sewer and utility public roadway vacation. Did I read it completely backwards? <laughs> you got them all, though. I got them all, though. Okay. Um, and then so we don't close it, we just leave it open? We'll just leave it open with the idea that we're going to make, uh, that this will be continued until December 3rd. Okay. So is anybody here this evening to address us for this public hearing on the Port Riverwalk vacations? Okay. So then we just move along? Really, I don't get the gavel again? No, please. <laughs> you, need a you, need a you need a motion to continue. Yeah, yeah it probably makes sense to make. So Thank I'll, you. Right. I'll move to continue uh, the public hearing on item four on the agenda. I believe it's item four, yep. Um, until uh, December 3rd. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler to con uh, what was it? To continue. 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 continue the public hearing and keep it keep the record open. I was writing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. And that motion carries. Um, next item five is to no, that was item four. There we go. 
Item five is to consider adoption of ordinance 2230 to repeal ordinance 2225, which was our self storage moratorium. Um, Mr. Brody or Mr. Fernelius want to just hit the highlights here? Just briefly as we did adopt that ordinance to uh, putting a moratorium on the construction or reconstruction or expansion of self storage. That uh, ordinance is or that moratorium ordinance is in effect until March. We've sort of completed most of our initial work on that. And so we're asking that uh, the moratorium be ended. In order to do that, we need to repeal it. And so that's what we're here for adoption tonight if the council so chooses. All right, very good. What are council's wishes? Your Honor. Council Member Kicker. I, I make a motion that we adopt the ordinance 2230 to repeal ordinance 2225, which continued a moratorium on the construction, reconstruction, or expansion of self storage facilities in the city. I'll second it. Motion by Kicker, second by Johnson. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. Um, so I've been probably pretty consistent in my <laughs> statements on this. Staff goes, yeah, but I know what she's gonna say. Um, so the reworking of the, the zoning to me was probably half of what the issue is with the self storage. There's the design considerations that were and have been the bigger issue versus site location. Um, we have not even started to tackle that piece of it. Um, and so in my estimation, repealing this part of the ordinance um, without working on the other half of the issue, um, I think is too early. So I'm not gonna be supporting the repeal, like I noted when we introduced it last month or two weeks ago. Discussion? Awfully quiet. <laughs> All right, well, we do have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The motion carries two, um, two opposed, uh, Council Members Geisler and Demmer. Item six. Consider resolution 19-126, providing for the sale of $10,895,000 in general obligation abatement refunding bonds, series 2019B. And we've got nothing but good news tonight, I've hear, I hear. <laughs> sure, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, we're quite pleased with the bid results that came in this morning. When we put the sale of our general obligation abatement refunding bond series 2019B up for sale, um, the low bid came in at 2.227%, which was significantly lower than our 2.7% that we thought would be our best bet. Um, this will reduce our future service, our future debt service savings by two million. $99,845 over the life of this new bond. Um, the debt levy now on the old debt issue was $991,810. The new levy will be $854,941, a difference and a savings on our levy of $136,869. So this is great news. We have Nick Anhut here from Ellers um, to explain the bid, um, bid process and the winning bidder, and he has a presentation for us. Nick? Thank you. Mayor, council members, Nick Anhut with Ellers and Associates, financial advisors to the city of Coon Rapids, and I'm happy to just echo the sentiment from Fran that, yes, some very good results. Uh, discussions that we've been having since July looking at this as a potential opportunity to reduce some of the city's overhead costs and administering its uh, existing debt. Just to recap, um, the bonds that were issued that are being refinanced were originally issued by the EDA back in 2010 as part of the improvement and acquisition of the Coon Rapids Ice Center. Uh, those bonds were backed by appropriated lease payments. The city was essentially entering into a lease agreement with the EDA, leasing that property and making a lease payment on an annual basis, and that was serving as the security to the bondholder, those annual lease payments. 
In discussions this summer, we identified that the obligation could be refinanced as a general obligation bond. The majority of the city's debt is backed by its full faith and credit, which is what a general obligation pledge means. Essentially, foregoing the lease process, if you will, and just levying the tax directly and pledging that you will make the bondholder whole using your wherewithal as a city government. Subject to a public hearing on November 6th, the council authorized that backing of the bonds, and I'm here before you with the results of the sale. Um, in that interim time frame, we did receive an affirmation from Moody's Investor Service, who does rate the city's debt, and they have upheld the city's AA1 credit rating. That is the second highest credit rating that any entity can receive from Moody's, so inclusive of cities, counties, the nation, as well as corporate. Uh, bonds. A AA1 rating is the second highest and a very, very good rating puts you in the uh, upper echelons, the top uh, 20th percentile of all municipalities across the country. Um, with that rating, we did receive five bids this morning on the city's behalf to purchase the bonds with the winning bid coming from FHN Financial Capital, their office out of New York. We received other bids as well from firms out of Minneapolis as well as even Oklahoma City. Uh, across the entire country with interest in buying these bonds. But FHN came in at the lowest, and their calculated true interest cost after we made some adjustments uh, came in at 2.23%, or just a hair above it. Plugging in the interest rates and the bids provided, this will result in almost $2.1 million of reduced debt service over the 16-year life of these bonds. We did structure the repayment so that you would achieve that savings annually, so we're reducing your annual payments by about $130,000 per year. So over that 16-year term, you will achieve that $2.1 million in total savings over the period once you've paid off those bonds. Represents about a 13% overall when you put it in a present value term. That future cash flow about 13% savings on the whole net of all the overhead and financing costs associated with this. So a very positive results. Uh, about a month ago, we were targeting about a $1.5 million savings, um, conservatively. But uh, uh, it's very good to see this follow through after all the discussions we've had over the course of the year. The resolution that was provided, uh, updated by your bond attorney today, actually shows that the bond size needed to execute this refinancing is not the 10.8 million, but rather uh, $10,260,000. So as we have seen recently with bids, there was some premium included within the uh, bid from FHN, meaning they were willing to pay a higher face value um, in exchange for the rates uh, that you will pay. In addition, we did save a little bit on what we had budgeted as far as financing costs as well. And so when you put those two together, we're able to reduce the overall size of the transaction to $10.2 million. That'll be the principal amount outstanding on these bonds as you repay them over the next 16 years. So in front of the council this evening is a updated resolution awarding the sale of $10,260,000 in general obligation tax abatement refunding bonds, series 2019B. That resolution will award the purchase of the bonds to FHN, the winning bidder, on the sale this morning. It will also establish an escrow fund in, in the city's name to redeem the existing EDA issue. Um, that redemption will occur on February 1st, 2020, which is the first callable opportunity to repay that debt obligation. It sets the term for repayment, uh, the savings that I had just briefed you on, as well as retaining the obligation to maintain the facility as a tax-exempt facility act available to the public, as well as annual disclosure practices, which you already do for all of your existing bond issues. Closing is scheduled for December 12th of 2019, and I will just add that there is also an item on the EDA agenda later on this evening, essentially to accept the city's termination of that lease agreement that I mentioned, and then the EDA in turn uh, seeing forward that this you will, they will redeem the existing balance of the EDA bonds. Um, with those two actions, we'll be all set uh, for that closing on December 12th. And that's when the funds will be wired into the city's account in your name in an escrow account to redeem those bonds. Uh, and then you will be able to uh, start achieving uh, that $130,000 worth of savings on an annual basis. 
All that said, uh, happy to address any questions of the council, and uh, we're very pleased with the results this evening. Thank you. All right. Well, good news, Nick. Very nice. Um, anybody have any questions? Let's just get on with the savings. <laughs> <laughs> Got any more? <laughs> Your Honor. Hi. Your Honor. Oh, go ahead. Just, just one thing. I just want to say that the presentation from your group on this whole process was, was really good for me. It was all clear and concise, and it really showed us what we were doing, what we were saving, and what the city was getting here. So I appreciate that good thank work. You. Yeah, and, and thank you to Nick from Ellers, but I also want to say to our city staff and um, our finance director, Ms. Hansen, that just the, the forethought to start looking at saying, how can we look at this? How can we be creative with our financing? How can we go do this? And that effort is saving us $2 million over the next 16 years, which means that we can either do lower taxes, that we can enhance services, that it just makes it better for all of our citizens. So thank you very much for, for looking out and finding those nickels and dimes and big dollars where we can. Your Honor. Councilmember Johnson. I'd move authorization of resolution 19-126 providing for the sale of 10 million is, I believe it, the updated number is 260,000 in general obligation uh, abatement refunding bond series 2019B. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Demmer. Discussion? Mayor. Councilmember Griscoviak. Fully in favor of this savings uh, opportunity, of course. That's a huge savings for us. I know it's not related to this, but I also favor uh, reducing our preliminary budget or preliminary levy by the amount saved in this transaction, which will be reflected in the 2020 budget. Sounds good. Mr. Stamwell, when do we have a conversation on that? Mayor Council, uh, you know, I would be interested in getting any feedback regarding that topic. I did uh, get some feedback from a few council members, it seemed like they're. Um, Supportive of just removing that amount from the final levy that would be adopted on December 3rd. So it was my plan at this point as part of the truth in taxation and the levy that's presented to you on December 3rd to remove that, but I wanted to bring it up tonight, so I appreciate the segue to do that, um, that if there are any concerns about that, then uh, I could certainly present it as option A and B or leave it as is, but um, at this point, I don't think there's a lot of harm to reducing the levy by that amount. Um, so it's really council's discretion at this point. Yeah. Your Honor. I mean, uh, Council Member uh, Kicker. I just want to comment that I in fully support that as well, giving money back to the residents. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, we've already set the budget, so th this is money that we obviously weren't planning on. We were planning on spending it on this, and now it's, I, I mean, I support that. It makes sense. Your Honor. Councilmember Johnson? I do just have a quick question for, okay. for staff related to that. Um, if the budget were reduced, would the levy necessarily be reduced by some proportionate amount? Mayor and Council, that is correct. We would literally reduce the levy by $130,000 or whatever the annual savings for 2020 would be. Um, on the average value home, we kind of estimated at $100,000 initially. We thought that'd be about $4 to the average value home in savings for 2020, it's gonna be a little larger now that it's up to 130,000. So the tax rate would be reduced to closer to uh, 40 point something percent. <laughs> Just above 40 um, as opposed to uh, 41 or so is what we said in the preliminary levy. And then the overall uh, percentage increase of levy would decrease as well. So we realize the immediate savings in 2020. And, and we don't have to get into the details of it here, but as you were planning for this, it's been a months long process and, and perhaps there were things that you were considering that this money that is now going to be essentially available to the city could be utilized on. What would be the things that you would be as the city manager interested in utilizing that money for? Because I can understand the impetus for the savings, and I may very well support that, mm -hmm. but if there is also something of significant value or return value that might be of more value to the city as a whole, I'd be interested in your insight on that as well, so. And Mayor Council, on that point, just very quickly, and we can provide some additional detail between now and December 3rd if that would be helpful, but 
um, since this was outside of our general fund levy, it was under the debt levy. Really, it gets used for exactly that, paying the debt. And it's in restructuring case, debt. Um, and in this yeah. case, you know, could you use that to buffer some sort of future debt if you maintain the levy at that point? Yes, but in some respects, it probably makes more sense to just, if there's a new project down the road or a new debt issuance to make a decision on the merits of that alone. Um, you know, it's not, it's $130,000, which is certainly a lot of money, but on the other hand, if you were to issue debt for a new project, uh, you know, what percentage would that 130 or so cover of that total debt really depends. So, you know, as we've talked about things like expansion of the ICE Center, which certainly we haven't made any decisions about yet, I wouldn't say there's anything immediately in the hopper that okay. we could transfer right away in 2020 and, and cover that with. All right, understood, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are we paying Nick by the hour to have this conversation? I'm just curious. No. This is kind of outside his purview. <laughs> Nick, Nick made his money today. Oh, okay. <laughs> Keep me here. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a second to authorize Resolution 19-126, providing for the sale of $10,260,000 $10, general obligation abatement. Um, any other discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And then I'll just trust, Matt, that you'll let us know when you need us to have that conversation or are you already satisfied with the conversation? Mayor, Council, at this point, what I believe I'll do is we'll present the December 3rd levy with the modified amount. Um, you know, if there, there would be opportunity um, to for council to change that if they so desired at that meeting, but it okay. um, you know, would help us just to understand if, if unless I get some feedback the next week or two uh, before we present that, it'd be my intention to just present it with the restructured amount um, for consideration. But so if anybody's got questions strong... or concerns about that in the meantime, please see me and we can discuss it. Sure. If anybody has any strong concerns to the contrary, they should let you know. Please do, yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, um, thanks Nick. Thank you. <laughs> as, as he slips on. Right. <laughs> <Good job, Nick. laughs> um, next on our agenda is item seven, uh, planning case 19-2, consider resolution 19-125, granting final plat for Port Riverwalk Centra Homes. If I could just check the record, did we get a vote on that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember. Okay. You voted so in the affirmative. <laughs> well, I moved it, but I, I couldn't remember if we did because we had so much follow-up yeah. conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Fernelius, do yeah. you want to the highlights? Mayor, I have a short presentation if the council is interested nice. one on this topic. Nice. Yeah. If you've got to go. one, we'd love to see okay. it. You know. All right. <laughs> I hate to feel like we missed out on anything. I don't know. Is, it, is the television working okay? Because all, all, none of our monitors are working. Right. Oh, yeah. They're <clears throat> flashing on yeah. and off. Okay. As long as that's working, that we're working. good. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, what I'm about to review, you won't have the opportunity to see. I apologize. Describe it so, in great detail. Yeah, we, we had some. <laughs> yeah, we had some. We had some technical issues earlier, which obviously have been carrying over. So, uh, Grant, so I apologize, Mr. For Finalis, that. Do you have something other than what we've have in our packet? Do you have additional then? No, it's essentially the same information. So okay, so we can kind of follow along in that then. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so just briefly, Mayor and Council, um, I can kind of touch on the highlights of this. So the applicant. Uh, for for this particular application is Centra Homes, which the council is, is aware of that. Um, for a number of years, we've been working with Centra on the Port Riverwalk development, uh, which is along Coon Rapids Boulevard. Generally, uh, for those that are able to watch this, uh, I can kind of point to what, what I'm referring to. Generally, we area, know it intimately yeah, up here. Between Egret Boulevard, uh, <laughs> Avocet, and then uh, to the east, uh, East River Road. Um, the applicant had received previously a preliminary plat approval on April 2nd. You may, may recall that, which included the entire 40-acre uh, site. I have a couple of slides that uh, are referencing the, the preliminary plat. Again, I apologize that you can't see that in front of you. Uh, but uh, the one segment we're referencing is kind of the west segment, which is mm -hmm. generally the area between um, Egret Boulevard and Drake Street. Uh, then there's a, a, a central segment, which is between Drake Street and Avocet uh, to Zilla. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, an area called the east segment, which is from Avocet and Zilla 
uh, along uh, East River Road. What they are uh, presenting tonight, however, is a, a final plat for the entire site. Um, they're going to plat it into uh, several outlots, and then this first uh, portion of the project will involve 29 lots. Uh, so this is the area that is described as inset A uh, in your packet. I think it's the last slide that you have. So this would be the first phase of the development. Uh, that is what we've been working with Centra on, and that's what they're platting uh, as part of this uh, final plat this evening. One thing I will note um, is that previously on the preliminary plat, that new road that would be constructed was referenced as Riverwalk Drive. And after some internal discussions with our staff, um, there is a street naming convention that the, that the city utilizes, and so it was, uh, we recommended that it be renamed to 100, 100th Avenue Northwest, which would follow the, the typical protocols that, that we have so our public safety folks can find it, uh, and it, it just kind of follows um, what we've done over the years. So it's referenced as 100th Avenue Northwest on the final plat. Um, so our recommendation is for council to approve the attached resolution 19125. There are four separate conditions listed. If you'd like, I can go through those, but um, those are pretty much consistent with, with the preliminary plat. There was a slight reduction in the amount of the park dedication fees, which is just simply related to the lots that they're going to develop. Um, this does contemplate in, the, in a subsequent item that is on your agenda related to the development that this will be platted in, in future phases. So as the developer um, moves forward with this project, we'll see the uh, outlots that are shown on this plat then subsequently platted into additional uh, single family detached townhome lots. Your Honor. Mr. Kicker. Um, Mr. Fernelius, um, in the pr preliminary plot, there were more lots listed. Like, for example, in outlot D, there were two lots, and now it's outlot, outlot D that's there's no longer. Is, um, so I think there were, in the preliminary in this area, there were 33, so it's been reduced by four. Does that mean overall the number of lots are going to be reduced? So rather than, what, 136, if we're down to 132 now? Or can these potentially be, I mean, can, you know, these outlots, can they come back and change those designations and create lots in there? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, and, and, and thank you for raising that, Councilmember Kicker. So um, if you recall, there were some title issues that we couldn't resolve in time, and so those lots are not going to be platted. Center will not take title to those lots immediately. Once we clear up the title, then they will come back and and plat those smaller outlots that were contemplated for residential development. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. So, so Mr. Fernelius, so like outlot C on one of these um, appears that it's going to be the, or maybe it's D. Um, outlot D is is the the private road between the river river uh, the, the the row homes. Um, it's described as outlot D on our on our map or on our plat here. Um, let's see here. Oh, it's six of twenty-two. It's the westernmost plat. It's second okay. slide down. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So on here, outlot D is listed on here, and I, I assume that's going to be like the private streets there. Right. That so that drawing is actually referencing the preliminary plat. So in the final plat, that whole area is simply an outlot. So what you're approving this evening is an outlot. It's not this actual, you'd previously approved this as a preliminary plat, but now in the actual development of the project, this, is, this will eventually be platted this as a, at a subsequent phase. Okay. If that makes sense. All right, I just wanna make sure we're not gonna end up with these leftover vacant lots there that. Uh, right. Okay. Yep. And, all right, so. Anybody have any questions of Mr. Fernandez here on this? Mayor. Councilor Brooker-Skoviak. So at the end of the day, are we going to have three plats, or is it all going to be combined into one final in phases like this? Um, Councilor Brooker-Skoviak, it, it, it could be platted in 
one or two subsequent phases. It all depends on um, Centra's development schedule. There is a timeline for that in our purchase agreement, so mm -hmm. it will happen within a prescribed time frame. But whether they choose to kind of plat the balance of it as part of one plat application or two, we, we don't know at this particular moment in time. Okay. If I may just follow up on that. Yeah, Mr. Johnson. So do we, do we yet have a signed purchase agreement? Yes, we do. Okay. Yep. And so um, when would, if we go forward with this tonight, uh, when would they be scheduling starting their home construction? More than likely that's going to happen in the spring. We had hoped to try and get the site ready, but we... That's why there's all that ground that's been yeah. there for the last Yeah, so there have been delays, particularly on relocating utilities, which is that, that item that we talked about earlier. Part of that mm -hmm. is related to just how long it's taken to uh, complete the temporary relocation of utilities. So everything has kind of pushed back the delay of construction on the actual homes. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Geisler. If you want to. Go for it. You're good? Okay. Oh, um, sorry. That's all right. Were you going to do a motion or a comment? No, I was going to do a comment. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so in the, um, in the resolution, 19-125, there, there were a couple of items that were in there. One was that the final plot approval uh, may be rescinded 90 days from the date of this resolution if the plot is not recorded within that time. So we'd have 90 days, correct? Uh, if, we, if we approve this today, we have, they have 90 days to record this? Well, I believe that's at the option of, of the city. I think they technically have a year to okay. record it. Okay, all right, all right. Because the then my follow-up to that would have been um, that number four says the owner of the property is authorized to do the recording of that. Correct. And aren't we the owner of the property until the sale goes through? We will, the city will sign off on the plat. Um, center is the applicant, so they will actually right. sign it as the event. So it'll all be, this will all be recorded Kind of simultaneously with all the other closing documents so this the plat will be recorded first and and then everything also follow behind that okay your honor Councilman johnson i'd make a motion in planning case 19-2 for approval of resolution 19-125 granting final plat for port river walk with the four conditions as follows number one compliance with title 11 Number two, park dedication, the amount of $58,000 will be paid for the 29 lots. That's $2,000 uh, per uh, each of the 29 lots. Park dedication will have to be paid prior to releasing the plat for recording. All engineering comments must be addressed and all comments from the Anoka County Highway Department must be addressed. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler. We kind of collaborated on that. Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> Discussion? Mr. Mayor. I'm, you know, we've been, the dirt's been moving, and I think that's good to, to keep that going because there are, the weather has not been cooperating. There's things that we find in the dirt that are not cooperating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's title. So just being able to see this making more forward progress, I think is phenomenal. And I look forward to seeing things on that dirt come the spring. Houses. 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 Homes. Right. <laughs> Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And Mr. Fernelius, I'll bet you're just staying up there for number eight, huh? Well, I was going to slide over to my chair over there. Oh, you're going to sit down? Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? If, if I can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Item number eight on our agenda this evening is to consider a development agreement with Centra North LLC for Port Riverwalk. Um, Mr. Wanna... Mayor, would you like just a brief summary of, of sure. what this is? I know- As long as you're comfortable now. Yeah, no, I am. <laughs> okay. I'm totally comfortable over here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Mayor and Council, um, as you know, the city has been working with Center Homes for, for a long time on the development of Port Riverwalk. Um, as I mentioned in my previous remarks, uh, in April of this year, the city approved a site plan and, and preliminary plat. Now this evening, of course, you approved a final plat. Uh, that is for 136 unit uh, development. Uh, there was a separate action by the HRA to approve a purchase agreement, which really addresses the, the business terms. 
That has been amended a couple of times to accommodate changes in the schedule. Right now, we're currently set to close uh, on or before January uh, 31st of 2020. We hope to, to do that um, sooner than that. Tonight's action really relates to the development agreement, which covers the first phase, which you just approved as part of that, that final plat. Um, there, the development agreement itself really deals primarily with site development responsibilities. It does contemplate that there could be up to two additional uh, amendments uh, uh, or two additional subsequent agreements, if you will, development agreements for those future phases of development. What this really covers are a couple of primary things. One um, relates to the developer improvements. So those are things like private streets, utilities, um, private sidewalks, landscaping, signage, those kinds of things. So under this development agreement, those items would have to be completed uh, by center by December 31st of 2020. It also uh, references the city's responsibilities under this uh, uh, agreement, which would be uh, public streets, sanitary sewers, water main, um, stormwater, landscaping, street lighting, those would be in the, in the, in the public realm. Um, and there are a couple of different dates by which we have to get those completed starting in next summer through the end of next year. Um, the doc document also uh, contemplates a letter of credit. So Centra will provide a letter of credit for some of the improvements um, that are part of their responsibility. There are other legal protections, warranties, those kinds of things that would be part of this uh, development agreement. I do wanna also clarify that um, the agreement that is in your packet includes a legal description that we're gonna need to modify. Um, that legal description references the entire property, and what we really need is to clarify that uh, for purposes of this development agreement, which will be recorded against the land, it's for this first phase. So we'll update that um, before it's, it's fully executed and then recorded. So our uh, recommendation tonight is for council to approve the development agreement with Centra Homes uh, LLC. All right. Do we have any questions? Your Honor, just a quick question. Councilmember Johnson. So this was drafted by Kennedy and Graven representing the city? Yes. Okay. And then um, is what you're proposing that we essentially adopt or approve the development agreement by and between the city of Coon Rapids and Central North LLC for Port Riverwalk? It says first edition. Um, in substantially the form that it exists here, subject to those legal description changes? Is that what you're proposing? I think that would be fine. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make that motion then. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Wells. Is there a discussion? Yeah. Council Member Demmer. Hopefully just a quick fun story. I was, uh, I worked with a guy who went to Coon Rapids High School, hasn't been back to Coon Rapids for a really long time, was driving on Coon Rapids Boulevard and I'm assuming hands-free, was so excited he gave me a call asking what was going on on Coon Rapids Boulevard. And uh, you know, just seeing the, the dirt being moved and seeing something being built there was uh, <clears throat> just fun to have someone who grew up in the city and hasn't been around like get excited about that, which then of course I used to try to get him to volunteer with the high school. But <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's, it's really exciting to see something moving here and, and I know it's been a long time coming, so it's let's a, go. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, a, and it's a very circuitous little road that you guys put in there, but at least now we have a paved road for that neighborhood to get in and out of there. Yeah, so we're able to get that completed. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Mayor? Councilmember Griscoviak? Clarifications, please. It says the, the original purchase agreement required the developer to enter into this development agreement prior to closing. So that still hasn't happened because we haven't closed, right? Correct. So we're changing the development agreement to just be phase one or just the smaller portion. But when we close, doesn't that development agreement have to encompass the entire parcel? So the, the, the development agreement will be, will have subsequent agreements that we'll enter into for the future phases. The purchase agreement stipulates that there's, I think it's a three year time window that Centra has to complete those subsequent phases. I don't remember what the exact dates are, but so we have some terms in the purchase agreement, all the development related uh, responsibilities are in, will be in the development agreement, either in the one that you have there, 
before you this evening or a subsequent one that we'll present. Okay, and I presume that. And the other part of that question is then the development costs that the city's incurred of the whole, the whole parcel, is that still going to be reimbursed at closing for the entire site or just for phase one now? Um, that will be reimbursed for, for everything that we've incurred to, to date. Okay, yep. okay, uh, at closing on it before just, Correct. Uh, the 31st. Yes. Okay, yep. thank you, that clarifies. I like how consistent you are about those, making sure we're gonna get reimbursed <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else? Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item nine is to consider Anoka County Joint Powers Agreement Amendment for Coon Rapids Boulevard reconstruction. Uh, we're being asked to approve amendment number one to a joint powers agreement with Anoka County for the reconstruction of traffic control systems at County State Aid Highway 1, Coon Rapids Boulevard, and Avocet Street, and Egret Boulevard, and uh, Coon Rapids Boulevard, pavement reconditioning between Egret and the junction of East River Road and Coon Rapids Boulevard, and rehabilitation of two bridges on Coon Rapids Boulevard at the east end of the East River Road Junction. Says, Mr. Hammer. Mr. Mayor, members <laughs> of the council, um, the last time we saw this was just up to kind of the bridge split at East River Road. Uh, Anoka County needed some additional rehabilitation work on the bridges itself going over the railroad tracks and over East River Road. So that was incorporated into this project. That, that's really the difference between what you saw before was their extra work, their extra cost. It goes to their portion of, of the project cost. There are a few other minor things that are moving in and out based upon what was completed in phase one of the grading and some other things, just coordination of stormwater items and such. But it, it's exactly the package you saw before with some additional rehab work by Anoka County at their cost. And I'll answer any questions. All right. Do you have any questions of Mr. Hammer? Mr. Uh, Council Member Demmer. Yeah, so I know we don't have any concrete plans to build that pedestrian bridge for sure, but it appears like it would go over this section. Um, is there anything in rehabbing this section that we're going to wish we had done? Should we build that bridge, or are we going to tear anything up that we just fixed, or is everything kosher that way? Council Member Demmer, Council. Um, I can't say everything's gonna be perfect. I mean, if, if you wanted to start putting in piers and pilings and other things, certainly, but the plat has been developed, the roadway improvements have been developed, the private improvements have been developed in such a way that it can be accommodated. Will we have to tear up portions of the trail? Yep, will we probably get into some of the stormwater features? Yeah, when you're doing excavations, that, that's gonna be necessary, but the space is there to put it in as we've kind of shown it to date. And I mean, the biggest thing I was wondering is, you know, if we were going to do something in the median to prepare for it versus, you know, now versus later, if it made any difference. And, and, you know, obviously the trails and all the stuff on the sides of the road are different. Just, just making sure we weren't buying and then tearing up a short train time later. Understood. We'll look at it again, but I think we're good. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or? So we want to offer a... Oh, I can make a motion. Awesome. Council Member Demmer. Uh, move to approve the execution of amendment number one to the joint powers agreement with Anoka County for improvements to Coon Rapids Boulevard, County State Aid Highway 1. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Kicker. Discussion? All, uh, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Nice job just rolling right through that County State Aid Highway 1. Boom. I, yeah, yeah when, I was, when I got to it, I went, ah. Oh. <laughs> it's not cash, it's seeds. Yeah. 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 I always yeah. guess every time. So far, I've gotten it right. <laughs> All right, we are up to item 10. Consider resolution number 18-13, um, parens 8-R-E-B-I-D, and parens, I've never seen that. That's an interesting one. That's my license plate. Appro <laughs> <laughs> Approving plans and specifications for Coon Rapids Boulevard improvements and authorizing solicitation of bids. 
Mr. Hammer, is it back to you again? Mr. Mayor, Council has just described the, the plans are pretty much what you saw the last time we bid them with the exception of the additional work by Anoka County for the bridges. All right. Your Honor. Council Member Demmer. Uh, move to adopt resolution number 18-13 Perrins 8 rebid, accepting plans and specifications for Coon Rapids Boulevard reconstruction and authorize the solicitation of bids. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Geisler. Discussion? Mayor. Councilman Member Gaskowiak. Uh, for Mr. Demmer, or er, uh, Himmer. Uh, <laughs> Close. Uh, I'll guess. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, we originally put this out for bids in the spring, right, of 2019, and we got the one bid, and it was not competitive, so we mixed it. Does it, um, now we're putting it out to bid in the fall instead of the spring next year. Was that to try to get more bidders, or it's a different timing? That's correct, Councilmember Skowiak. The the idea here is that people are winding down their construction projects. They're going to go out deer hunting and get ready for the holidays. <laughs> and so, if we can line them up for a nice project in the spring, then they have the ability to plan for that now, mm -hmm. and we get the opportunity to get in on the ground floor of of the bidding environment. Uh, that may help us also as we go into the phase two portion of the Riverwalk development. So we're hopeful that within another month or two, we'll be back in front of you bidding a subsequent job, which is right next door to what this one is. Um, so there's, there's plenty of activity to be had. The sooner we get out there, the better. Uh, I don't know where, where everyone's going to land, but I'm excited to see the difference between now and, and late in the spring. And the follow-up question, I, I believe you answered it, but the only difference then in this specification is that bridge work. The sidewalks, the crosswalks, the lanes, everything is the same as what we've laid out in our neighborhood meetings and everything. Right? That's correct. All, okay. all of the final product will be the same. There are a few stormwater items yeah. that just, just making connections to the work that's, again, adjacent to it because it's, it's relying on one another and it's just the timing of which piece gets done at what time based upon where the schedules land. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions? All right, let's see here. So we've, we have a motion and a second on this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. All right, item 11, consider easement agreements for project 18-13, Coon Rapids Boulevard improvements. We have quite a theme going here. <laughs> Mr. Hammer. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, yes, you're right, it is a theme. Um, these are some easements that are necessary for the project we're, we're going out for bid for. Uh, one is on the Lily Putt site, which um, will put a concrete sidewalk in replacement of the goat trail that exists there today. Uh, so that will complete the sidewalk between uh, that, that segment. Uh, the other is on the former City Hall site, right on the corner of Ava site. We're putting a southbound right turn lane in. So as you're coming into that intersection for buses and other things. So as you're heading southbound at the intersection of Zilla slash Avocet and Coon Rapids Boulevard, um, we need a little extra room to get a right turn lane in there. So we're purchasing some right away for that. The, the exhibits are correct on there. Um, we've worked directly with uh, the property owner. It's the same owner, two separate entities. Uh, we've arrived at uh, an agreeable solution and therefore um, We'd like to get this wrapped up so we can uh, make sure we have it in hand by the time the project starts. All right. Yeah. Councilmember Demmer. So um, maybe I just couldn't tell from the diagram, but there's a permanent sidewalk easement and a temporary easement. And it tell me about this, like the temporary one. When does it go away? And is the permanent one underneath it? And this is all we're building a sidewalk and the temporary is a fence in the meantime? Council Member Demmer, uh, Council. Uh, it's extremely tight there. Uh -huh. there, there, there is a, a jog in the right of way from the old city hall site to here. Um, based upon the location of their existing facilities, we really don't have the opportunity to add a five foot boulevard, landscaping, the whole nine yards. So we're, we're, we're wedging a sidewalk in here to get a sidewalk in here. So there isn't a lot of room we need for the physical sidewalk construction, but what we need to do is take down the fence, 
grade back, build retaining walls, things of that nature. So it's a temporary in that it will be there through the term of construction. I believe it expires somewhere around November. Uh, but the idea is that that's just to match back into their existing facilities, move some things around to make it fit. Great. I, I appreciate that. And I, I do really appreciate um, the work you're doing because I know that that is a tough one to fit a sidewalk into. But it's certainly going to look a lot nicer with a sidewalk than, than what's there. And hopefully we just keep that going through all the other unfinished sidewalks on that side of the road. Was that going to be a motion? Oh, would you like one? Sure. All right, fine. <laughs> all right, uh, move, to rec uh, move to authorize execution of the two easement agreements with the Lily Putt Ownership Group for Project 18-13. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Demmer, uh, Kicker. All right. Second by kicker. Um, discussion? Your Honor, Council Member Johnson. I just want to um, say that I appreciate the work in this area and also the, the easement exhibit shows the future pedestrian bridge. <laughs> so. And, and, the, and we don't officially condone goats in town. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that might sidewalk. fall under the undomesticated wow. animals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Them and bees. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> and that motion carries. We're on to item 12. And consider resolution number 20-7 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for the 2020 well rehabilitation and authoriz authorizing solicitation of bids. Um, Mr. Hammer, I think this is your, your last round here tonight, isn't it? Your last one? Last item. So I'll leave when I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Don't um, leave. Yes, Mr. I'm sure you'll have questions during other business. <laughs> Council, um, this is just our ongoing program. We've kind of settled into a routine, an eight-year rotation where we touch three wells, hit a booster pump. Uh, so technically, this money is in the budget for 2020. We're asking, uh, we're, we won't incur the costs until 2020, but um, we are asking to move forward now to try to get the work done before the prime pumping season starts next summer. And so with that, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, but uh, it's a, just a continuation preventative maintenance on our, on our system. Excellent. Any questions for Mr. Hammer? Mayor. Mr. Hammer, just Our budget amount is worst case scenario, right? And in, the, in the past, we haven't had to do that extensive of a rehab or? Yes, Councilman Ruskoviak, that's an excellent point. I should have brought that up is we just assume the worst case scenario. So if, if everything on all of these wells is bad, um, this is the dollar amount. We typically come in substantially under what that budget is. You pull the well, you do give it the once over, maybe it needs improvements, maybe it just needs some cleaning and it goes right back in. So um, that's an excellent point and I appreciate you bringing that up. Your Honor. Council Member Demmer. Uh, move to adopt resolution number 20-7 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for the 2020 well rehabilitation and authorize the solicitation of bids. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Geisler. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And now we are looking at item 13 to consider the CenturyLink build-out settlement agreement. And I'll bet we're looking at Mr. Strauss. You, you, you watch this over at the studio and then just come over when it's about time, don't you? Did Matt tell you that? <laughs> no. He wasn't I thought, supposed I, to say anything. <laughs> I saw the Central League guy and I thought, how come Eric isn't here? And then I went, no, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your Honor and uh, council members, we're here to um, consider two CenturyLink items. The first uh, is the build-out, uh, basically settlement agreement. Um, that is basically allows us uh, at CenturyLink to uh, basically leave when their franchise expires. Uh, if you recall, back when CenturyLink was coming uh, into the Twin Cities, uh, everybody was pretty excited because uh, overbuilding is rare. Uh, usually there's one incumbent uh, cable provider. Uh, we've had, in my 25 years, we've only had uh, one or two that had looked and piqued interest and so with CenturyLink coming into town they already had a lot of the infrastructure in place with their phone and internet and so uh, 
you know, it was something that we were very excited about to give our residents in Coon Rapids a second option. Um, you know, choice is great uh, for the residents, but uh, unfortunately, uh, over the last year, we could tell they've been starting to uh, pull out of the market, getting out of the cable TV business. So, um, this and the second item, uh, I'm just going to touch on these briefly uh, because our, our legal attorney is here and I'll introduce him next and he'll go into all the background and all the good details. Um, but uh, the second item is also uh, for a franchise fee uh, settlement uh, agreement. Uh, that was, uh, we had seen some discrepancies uh, back in 2016 on, on there was a, a significant change in the uh, monies we were receiving uh, in the franchise fees and peg fees. Uh, and we did inquire a few times uh, and eventually we participated in, in an audit with some other uh, metro communities and, and community stations. And uh, so based on the audit and the findings of the audit, we're gonna ask um, uh, for uh, settlement uh, money in the amount, well, I won't get into that because that'll be the next item. But um, first, I'd like to introduce our um, cable attorney, Mike Bradley, uh, who handles all our, our cable items. Um, Mr. Bradley? Who well, I mistakenly thought was the CenturyLink guy. And I, I was thinking it's okay to keep him here late because they're paying him. <laughs> but now right, I just realized right. we should have yeah, him earlier on the agenda. Joke's on you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Bradley. I'm with Bradley Law, and I've been representing the city for a number of years on your cable franchising matters. And the last time I was here, we were all very happy because we were entering into a, a new cable franchise with CenturyLink and uh, finally getting uh, competition in cable service, um, you know, really for the first time in the history of the city. And, um, and it was an exciting time. Um, unfortunately, um, CenturyLink has uh, chosen to exit the market. And when they uh, decided to do that, we reached out to work with them really to kind of come up with a soft landing um, for them and for us, frankly, because as you remember, when we granted that cable franchise, it was for a period of five years. And we were very intentional on granting a short franchise because we wanted to see how they were building out. And, um, and, and they were struggling, frankly, on, uh, on doing that. Um, so what we did is we, uh, we, we worked with CenturyLink in, um, in doing a couple of things. One, making sure that, um, that it was very clear that they would not be renewing their cable franchise so that we did not have to expend money preparing for renewal, which we, we would be doing right now, frankly. Um, uh, secondly, we wanted to make sure that the cable subscribers were taken care of, the CenturyLink cable subscribers, so that they were transitioned um, you know, to another product, um, and that, that they didn't incur any expenses uh, as a result of, of that uh, transition. We also wanted to make sure that the right-of-way, um, there was no damage to the right-of-way as a result of constructing a cable system. Now remember, CenturyLink provides phone and internet services. They're going to continue to do that. Those are under uh, a different permitting uh, schedule and a set of laws. Uh, rather than the cable franchise, but to the extent that they, they were doing right, any right-of-way construction um, related to the cable system, frankly, we don't think there is any, but if there was, if there is, then they have to pay for all the expenses of, of restoring the, uh, the right-of-way. Um, so with that, that's really our, uh, let me see if I, I, I may have missed one here. Oh, and then finally, you know, franchise renewal. So we wanted to make sure that uh, when the franchise term expires, which is January 2021, then uh, CenturyLink will be completely done providing cable service and cable service only. If you're a phone and internet subscriber, you don't need to worry. They're going to still be there, so they say, uh, to provide uh, those, those services. So with that, um, you know, we would recommend approval of, of this settlement agreement that's before you. Mr. Bradley, is CenturyLink completely pulling out of cable or, or, or just in this region or just in this area or do you know? Uh, System-wide. System-wide. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that was a real exciting thing when they first came forward and to consider that. Hmm. Right. Yeah, no, we really thought it would make a really 
We were, we were hopeful that, that it would give consumers choices, choices that they didn't have before, and it would, um, you know, one, you have a choice, and two, maybe it would, uh, you know, cause pricing to go down a little bit. And unfortunately, they, that, it didn't work out for CenturyLink. All right. Anybody have any questions, Mr. Bradley, before we entertain the motion? Mm -hmm. so, Mr. Mayor, I'll make Mr. a motion Geiser. to um, approve the attached settlement agreement with CenturyLink. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Wells. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And now we will item 14, consider the CenturyLink franchise fee settlement agreement. Great, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council Members. And uh, you know, I was really excited about coming here tonight and, and going over uh, this settlement agreement. And then uh, Nick from Ellers comes on and, and <laughs> saves you a boatload. And uh, so I have some nickels to spread out here uh, for you all tonight. But um, you know, CenturyLink didn't um, uh, didn't have a lot of cable subscribers, so the amount of franchise fees that they were paying, um, you know, is relatively small. Um, like Eric said, um, we noticed that there was um, some unusual activity by CenturyLink on how the franchise fees were being paid. We went um, and formed a coalition of uh, municipal entities, um, hired a financial consultant to uh, review this on a um, on a very affordable basis, frankly. And, I hope uh, so. We're only talking nine thousand dollars here. <laughs> well, and it was you know <laughs> when you spread it out, it's a lot more, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and some were higher than others, yeah. based on when the franchises were in place and how many subscribers they had. Um, but you're right, and that's and that's exactly why we we did that, right? Mm -hmm. Because we knew that the amounts weren't super high, so we didn't want to spend obviously more than uh, what we uh, thought the um, the indiscretion was. Uh, in any event, CenturyLink was cooperative uh, with the review, and uh, and we were able to um, uh, receive um, uh, eight thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars and fifty-five cents um, as a result of, of that review. Uh, we also did have our uh, financial consultant um, fees completely paid, and that's also uh, in the agreement as well. Nice. All right. Anybody have any questions, Mr. Bradley? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the franchise fee settlement agreement with CenturyLink. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Kicker. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Is that it? Thank awesome. You. Thank you very much. All right. No, Thank we you. can let the attorney go now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a lump. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so that brings us up to the open mic public comment portion of the meeting. Is anybody here to address council for open mic this evening? Anybody who wants to address council on issues that are not on the agenda this evening? All right. Seeing none, we'll move. We don't have any reports on previous open mics, and we are at other business. Hanson. Mr. Hammer, Hanson, is, is this still the next holiday Christmas or? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Council, no, no change in what's happening out there. Uh, we did have to push back the pour of concrete from when it was 12 degrees last week until we hit 30s and 40s this week. Um, so now it's just breaking concrete cylinders and wait until we hit that specified strength doing um, side treatments just to make sure we're established and ready to go. But um, no change as we sit here today. Um, all right. Well, so I, I want to really throw out a big congratulations to the Coon Rapids High School football team. Oh, team. Yeah. You know, that was just tremendous to make it into the U.S. Bank for the semifinals. Unfortunately, they ran into a, a grinder that was Chaska. Oh, my gosh. It was a very good team. But it was really fun. The, it was really a lot of excitement. And the team stayed in there. They didn't give up. You know, they came back at 14 points at the end of the, you know, towards the end of the game, and it was, it was just, it was, it was good to see that, and it was really fun. More importantly, they smoked Andover. 
<laughs> sure. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Council Member Wells. And it was for those of us that couldn't make it down there. It was it was just really great that it was televised locally. So yeah. I I wasn't there, but I didn't miss a play. So uh, and I think that was uh, awesome that the cable handled that. So yeah, yeah that was nice. Was Twin City Gateway Visitors Bureau was co-sponsored that along with uh, Rapids Honda, I believe, was the other the oh, yeah. sponsors. Rapids Honda and TC Gateway. Yeah, that was very nice. And there was a lot of. Uh, Coon Rapids Cardinal Pride displayed on the broadcast. They kept pointing to that, so it was a great spotlight for our city as well. Good job, Cardinals. Yep, yep. Well, and it was it was really fun to give the team an escort over the um, the sports center for their practice in the morning, um, the squads and the fire truck, and uh, it was it was very fun. Um, and the other thing that we had this past weekend on Sunday was uh, an event sponsored by the Community Strength Foundation and the City of Coon Rapids and the Miss Coon Rapids program. Um, our 2019 Miss Coon Rapids Catherine Kippers became the 2019 Miss Minnesota. So we had her send off Sunday afternoon, we presented a proclamation and she went through all of her gowns that she'll be wearing at Miss America in December. She went through her talent all very secretive, can't take any pictures, <laughs> nothing in video because this is the way it is. It's gonna be presented at Miss America. Um, and she's just been a great ambassador for Coon Rapids and she is absolutely the real deal. She is just, just bright and talented and her platform is taking on the next 100 years of Miss America and the other states are recognizing that and asking her for information on her platform and so. <laughs> It's going to be really fun. So, um, and then I have one thing related to the crossing in front of the high school, and I know that's a county road, um, but we had an a, a accident there on Friday night with a pedestrian. It's really dark through there. I mean, it's like the the flashing lights aren't going on the crosswalk. Didn't those used to go? Um, it, it's just so dark through there. Do we, uh, does the county, do we have any plans? Is there anything in the works? <laughs> Mr. Hammer? Yes, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, there's a meeting already scheduled with the school district in Oka County. Um, we did a safe routes to school planning study of that whole campus, not just the roadway, but mm -hmm. Um, parking lots, layouts, things of that nature. So we'll, we'll resurrect those conversations. Uh, yes, it's a county road. There's been talk of that being a turn back, so it becomes a city road. There's, um, you know, the lane drop at Raven, which is kind of a goofy deal. And so there, there's, there's some things that can be done short term, and then we obviously want to look at the long term for that. And so I believe it's next Wednesday or within a week or so, I believe we have a meeting with the school district to kind of go through what those options are short and long term. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I know there was going to be a conversation about it anyway to realign with the with the new front entrance of the high school, I thought, wasn't there? Because now with the new entrance moved to the east, I thought there was some talk of trying to real, you know, align that crosswalk with that, too. I'm not aware of how that okay. ended up being. I'm not sure what the conversations were with the Noka County, but uh, there were three different options at that time which did show that crosswalk being realigned. Maybe there's some uh, chokers narrowing it to single lane in each direction, um, okay. dynamic display sign, all, all kinds of different things that it was kind of a partnership on, on everyone. And then the Safe Routes to School funding fell through and nothing really was instituted on a holistic uh, plan at that time. So okay. we'll see where we stand now with kind of some of the reconfiguration and, and where where we might be able to do something differently, whether it's a city and or county roadway. Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. John, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you. I appreciate you telling us that there's this meeting coming up and, and some of the topics that might be discussed at the, the meeting. Um, I will say that one of this, you know, you're on council for a while and you get kind of a sense of certain things and there are certain roads that we get that come through the city that are county roads, but from time to time they become problematic and there are issues that arise that we need to work through with our other partners and stakeholders in the community and one of the things that seems to be a constant thing um, that we face 
every year, every other year with the county is that, it, well, if it's a problem, then we'll just turn it back to you kind of thing. And I just wanted to kind of note my initial resistance um, to that kind of approach to these things. I would appreciate the county um, doing as a collaborative a job as they did with the Hanson uh, Bridge uh, overpass and working with the city to address some of these issues, especially when they're safety related. Um, you know, uh, we've got other things to work through with, with the county as well. Um, and I, I am mindful that we put before the county this year, um, and there may be times down the road uh, to address it, the footbridge over uh, Coon Rapids Boulevard, and they took a pass on it this year, which I understand for various reasons. But, um, you know, there are things that um, I would like to see us kind of hold the line on, and that's just my own personal view. I don't speak for the council on this or other council members, um, but I would like it to be known um, that I at least am a little resistant to these efforts to turn back property or turn back roads to us that have long been in the county's inventory. So I just leave that with you. Your Honor. Councilor Wells. Uh, I knew this would come up tonight and I, I, will, I hate to reiterate, but I drive by there all the time and did tonight and it does seem darker than it normal. Yeah. And that seems like the most minimal fix to, to yep. get to at least brighten it up there. But I've been around the city for 41 years, and this conversation predates me. I mean, that's how long they've been talking about this crosswalk, and nothing ever really gets done. And I understand not only is it expensive, it's not practical to put a, you know, either a, a bridge over the Northdale. They've even talked about under, and, you know, and it just doesn't work in a lot of ways. But, uh, and I know this would be a traffic nightmare, but in your group, can you at least talk about a pedestrian uh, generated stop signal, you know, where the pedestrian would actually turn the signal red. And, and I understand when kids are crossing the street one at a time, a class of 40, because I've seen it, it happens. It, it would not be easy for traffic, but from a safety standpoint, something has to be done. And, and like I said, we've been talking about, you know, a bridge forever and no one's willing to pay for it. It's also also a space issue there for the high school, you know I mean? Because obviously it has to expand. So I mean, I just wish we'd look at something that would actually happen instead of, you know, studying it for another six months and hoping nobody gets hit so we won't, we'll forget about it again for another two, three years. So I hope something happens. You're here. Councilor yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think in my notes to, to staff on that too, you know, I think I'd reiterate what, um, Council Member Wells talked about, I mean, we have the trail crossing around Lake Boulevard, you know, because we wanted to get people safely across that road. There's the, you can turn the light red and cross, you know, and, and to me, yeah, there maybe are some issues that there's gonna be so many people t trying to cross and how long would that be red? Um, but I think the safety committee needs to take a look at it again and so I, I'm, glad that you have the meeting already on the calendar and so mm -hmm. that we'll start to take a look at this a little, a little closer again. All right. Any other business? I'm typing away there. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Demmer to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>